welcome to the first real episode of the show, Buddha the Way. I am delighted to introduce you to Eric von Verenberg, my first guest, a man who needs very little introduction to those outside of the martial arts. Um, he started his martial arts journey at the age of 10 at the famous Zendokan Dojo. Uh, he holds a variety of black belts in the Kyokushin Budokai, in bearing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, achievements in Krav Maga, numerous wins in various competitions in different um, formats. Um, he's a poet, he's worked with the Belgian Ministry of Sport, um, and was instrumental in myself getting the book Budo, the Book of the Way, off the ground when I presented him with basically a series of writings I had done and I got encouragement of him. Um, you're in for a treat with this video. It's very in-depth, it's not long, but it's very in-depth and he covers a variety of topics including how we all feel as our young people move into the digital age and become digital children and he also covers the virtue of loyalty so sit back enjoy yourself and i'll see you on the other side welcome to the first episode of uh, buddha the way podcast uh, i'm delighted to have my friend uh, eric with me today who's going to speak about the importance um, that we have discussed for many years um, around budo in everyday life um, uh, eric is going to discuss um, a wide range of topics uh, in particular he's going to be looking at loyalty so um, eric thank you very much for coming and welcome to the program well thank you uh, it's an honor for me to be uh, the first guest guest, sorry, the first guest um, to be here uh, present today. Um, maybe we should restart now <laughs> because I make the first guest. It, I don't maybe it's fine. do it directly. It's okay. fine. Sorry. It's fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Just <laughs> <Don't>, carry on. <laughs> okay. Um, well, um, first of all, um, it is important um, to point out the book uh, Budo, the booklet Budo that you have been written um, since a long time now and we, you have put a lot of work into it and uh, I had a small, um, how, do, how do you say it in English? Uh, ah, contribution. It. Yeah, contribution. Yeah, you know, it was quite significant. And I think it's, um, it's worth very much, you know, I mean to society and all its concepts, I think it's very important. And um, both in my functions and roles inside and outside of martial arts world, I think it's very important that you address the problem of not knowing and not being able to apply the values of Budo in daily life. The booklet uh, Budo, which I have just uh, showed, it's the book of the way, and it clearly addresses this problem and does it in a very realistic way. Mm -hmm by linking to stories to one or more values. In my opinion, you have thus succeeded in creating a certain visualization that draws the readers into an imaginary film in which everything becomes clearer. Mm -hmm. Merging through stories of famous martial arts characters with the Budo values turns out to be a very good formula for success. By success, I mean both the achievement of a certain level of understanding of the values by the readers, but also the logical explanation of why the booklet has turned out to be such a huge success in such a short space of time. Mm -hmm. It was therefore a great honor for me to be a small part of the realization of the booklet. As far as those Budo values are concerned, I personally believe that they cannot only be applied within a martial arts context, but also be perfectly integrated and applied in an efficient way within any form of society. The Budo values actually cross every boundary, which in the past has often been the reasons or the reason why certain values and norms could not be fully expressed and are perfectly uh, uh, applicable within any religion, culture, 
and you name it. Mm -hmm. They're secular, Going, aren't they? Sorry? They're secular. They don't, they, they can slot into a religion or be not part of a religious body because they're universal. They're, they're, they're human universal traits that we all like and appreciate. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I mean. So going forward, it should be the intention that the Buddha values are communicated worldwide in such a way that each individual clearly receives, receives the message, understands it, but also further proclaims it to all other individuals who are on his or her frequency. Each target group has its own antenna and receives the Budo message on their own frequency, which they can then communicate with their own target group in their own understandable language. Very good, yes, very good. So take for example, people with a visual impairment. They too have the right to possess that knowledge. It is then up to us to convert the Budo values into a bright version so that they too can proclaim the message within, the, within their own world. The same, of course, applies to people with hearing impairments, and you name it. It's, it's really important. Mm -hmm. And um, also the language border should not be a barrier to the spread of the Buddha values. Finding individuals who are willing to proceed to all important translations is an essential key to success. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, it starts with the foundations, and that is our youth. Each of us is yeah, confronted on a daily basis with the sad fact that especially they as target group need the Budo values the most. And it is often the only life preserver for the youth to which they can clinch in the chaos they undergo during that period. It is very important that young people learn to understand the value as well, but above all, know how to apply them efficiently within certain circumstances or situations. The beauty of it is that in this way, they will undergo a realistic experience that will provide them with so much knowledge that they will be able to use it in any point in their lives and even constantly update them through those previous experiences. They are transformational tools in a way. Yes, yes. And um, I think our youth, it's so important. And today's child can be perfect, but can be the perfect Budu values teacher of the future by proclaiming a message that is born from a combination of reading and understanding, in this case, Budo, the book of the way, story, to effectively experiencing, applying, and even spreading of that knowledge gained within the world in which it roams. And this is so important for today's child. And it shows the importance of the booklet. So, um, as you know, I think, we know each other already a long time. <laughs> My favorite Budo value is? Loyalty. Yes, loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would, would know it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's without a doubt loyalty. But when we talk about loyalty, unfortunately, it is a term, and this is my opinion, of course, that is often used carelessly. Loyalty to me isn't just a piece of text written or on a scrap of paper or, or something else. Um, I've memorized the meaning of, and I'm preaching it like, you know, like people are preaching it like a parrot, just saying something, you know, loyalty when you ask them or that's not for me, that's not what loyalty is all about. Mm -hmm. As far as I am concerned, loyalty is mainly something that manifests itself in the form of a kind of spontaneous sacrifice in which a person is selflessly and diligently committed to a certain goal and is determined 
to integrate this goal into his or her daily life every day again. Loyalty for me is a kind of symbiosis in which a value and the person who feels called to it merge into a whole that serves a common purpose. That being born of that fusion is the perfect example of what loyalty should look like. It is something unique and few people understand that. And it's just that misunderstanding that makes them lose it just as quickly. Only to find out afterwards that it will probably never come back in their lives again. Mm -hmm. So for me, the greatest killers, but they are really a kind of yeah, dark values that are killers for the code. And for me, in, in, this, in this code of loyalty, they are ego, greed, jealousy, envy, and all the other ones that I am not thinking about it straight away. So a person who is actually a loyalty being, you know what I'm saying, a loyalty being, will have to find out for a lifetime that the road to the goal is not only strewn with the dark version of the Budo values, like I said before, but it is also a path of solitude in which meeting another loyalty being is something unique and always gives hope to be able to continue to walk the path in that exceptional way. And as a Budoka, I have always carried the banner of loyalty with honor and lifted it as high as I could so that everyone could see that my ultimate goal is always to serve and commemorate my Kaisho. Mm -hmm. Spreading his Budo legacy is my reason for being. And because loyalty is, it's who I am. It's what I am. And I never have to pretend to be who I really am. And that's easy for me. And by giving the example that I really can, I hope that new beings will be born from this message, created by the merging of the knowledge that comes from your booklet and their true nature. Yeah, it's very so true. That's my, my opinion about starting the Budo values into a, to a, how important they are to our society, to our youth, mm -hmm. and my personal favorite um, value, uh, loyalty. loyalty, as you know. And I hope um, that people get something from this message. Uh, I really hope so. I, I think it's an incredible, very powerful and very moving message you just gave. I, and I, I, I was actually captivated and I wasn't actually asking any questions because I was caught, <laughs> I was caught up in what you were saying. <laughs> so I didn't ask anything. I was just Oh, this is good. This is really good. And I completely agree with you um, with regard to our children who are increasingly becoming digital beings, uh, yes. more wrapped up in their phones than their lifestyles or their families, placing um, virtual people over nuclear families sometimes. And I will be addressing that in a Buddha and child development um, video that I'll be taking out that I've had a lot of interest in, you know. So um, I would like to take this time to thank you for yeah, um, no um, a very eloquent and very, very inspiring uh, talk. Uh, and um, I have no doubt that I will be having you on again <laughs> so we can have <laughs> another one. Um, so I would like to thank you very much. And um, I look forward to um, chatting to you in the near future. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, I'm very grateful that I had the honor to be the very, very first one who could do this interview. And uh, I also need to thank you because of all your efforts for creating this booklet and even future things you will do to make it even more detailed, to spread the message you know, worldwide. 
Uh, it I think it's fantastic job you have been doing there. Fantastic job. And the importance, like I told, the importance, it's huge. It's huge. So you should not be thanking me. I should be thanking you for doing that. Well, maybe we should both be thanking Kaicho because the book was born out of loyalty to promoting his values. Us, that's uh, 100% for sure. That's 100%. 100%, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, again, thank you for the interview. And um, yeah, we talk to each other soon, my friend. Take care. Yeah. Us. Bye. Us. 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 Well, I don't know about you, but I just thought that was absolutely brilliant. A real good grasp of the virtues and an extraordinary depth of understanding about loyalty. And Eric was right when he explored um, the importance of virtues with young people. And I will be doing a single video on that myself. I, probably just myself will be doing it. And we'll explore it at later. But let's turn back to you. Let's turn back to you. In your learning environments, do you promote Buddha? If you're teaching martial arts, do you just go through a standard physical class and at the end of it, at the cool down, you just bow and then at some point, or oh, we're different from boxing or wrestling because we have Budo, but you don't actually, actually explore that with your young people or your students. When you're out and about yourself, not in any kind of environment and you're just meeting individuals, do you use Budo as a way of pointing out if somebody's being disloyal to somebody. Do you just point out and say like, well, I wasn't very loyal and I wasn't very respectful and use Budo as a way of elevating them. You're the torchbearers marching ahead into, at the moment with this digital age, what is actually quite a bleak landscape. And this landscape won't be smooth. This torchbearing, this wandering forward will not be easy. Seven times down, eight times up, you've heard that expression, and that's probably what it will be like. But here's the thing, here's the question to you. If not you, then who? If you don't take responsibility yourself and push this forward yourself, even one individual working hard at this will make a difference. If not you, then who else? You have that within yourself to make some real positive change, slowly, like a small pebble being dropped in a pond and watching it ripple outwards. You have that possibility. You have that possibility. It's a probability more that if you embrace it, you have that within yourself. And it is up to you to do something about it. You. Not him or her, but you. Okay, always remember... This is our way, and this is how we live. I'll see you next time.